Okay. Page 14, Poirot, or P-R-O, or whatever. I don't know how to pronounce it. I, don't hurt me, okay? I don't know. I didn't do anything prior to page 14 as far as videos go because that's explaining to you how to read music and names of the notes and finger numbers and all that junk, okay? Uh, so I'll leave it up to you to go through that and do your best to learn it. Uh, I'm going to be calling out note names forever. you got to know the note names, all right? So we'll get those. The other stuff I'll be talking about here and there in different videos and whatnot. On page 14, they are introducing what they call the F clef. It's also known as a bass clef. Uh, it's that weird looking thing that, I don't know, it's, it's just a weird little thing with two dots. It's used to signify where F is on the staff. The staff is those five lines. And we need to determine which line or space is which note. The F clef says the F is the line that's between those two dots. That's an F. Now the F clef doesn't move around the staff, it's always in the same spot. So when you see the F clef, you know that the next to the top line that's between the dots, that's an F. Well if that's an F, you can figure out any other note by going up or down the alphabet appropriately. And that's the way it works. Now they're discussing the names of the notes and some things here on the page. You have an F is on that line and a G is the space right above that line. And then the A is the top line and, and etc. Again, you need to memorize the notes as quickly as you can, okay? Uh, doesn't hurt as for a while as you go through and play and to actually say the name of the note as you play just to reinforce the name of the note. It's important. But what I am more concerned about is playing the notes with you to make sure you're playing the right notes at the right time, right? Because a teacher would do this. If you sat down in a teacher and played something wrong, they would tell you something to that effect. You don't have a teacher. You, you, how do you know you played it wrong? So play it with me and when what you play doesn't sound like what I'm playing, you got it wrong, because I'm right. Well, take my word for it. Right. So what I want to do is I want to go through these four lines at the bottom of the page, and I want to play them and have you play them with me, okay, okay, to make sure that you get them right. So let's take a look at the first line. Now you have an LH and an RH. LH stands for left hand. R8 stands for right hand, right? They want you to play the first two measures with your left hand and the last two measures with your right hand. Okay, well, it's fine if that's the way they want to do it. So to do this, you see the little three under the first note? That's the finger number. It tells you which of the fingers to use on that note. It tells you where to put your hand. And they're saying put the third finger, your middle finger, on F, and the F is here. Now, there are a lot of Fs on the piano, right? They're all over the place. Okay, it's the bottom white note on a group of three black notes. It's an F. There's only one F on the keyboard, on the piano, that matches that F in the music. Only one. And that is the F below middle C. So middle C is here. You go down to the first F you come to, and that's this one. That's the F that it needs to be played. It's the key that needs to be played. That's the note that needs to be played. When you see it, that note in the, in the music. So what we're going to do on this is they have the LH and RH for left hand and right hand, so we're going to use each hand one at a time. That'll make it interesting. They got a little three under the number, so you take your third finger, it's the middle finger, and you put on that key on the piano here, okay? Now, you don't have to play it, but I like to make noise, so I play it. Then the other 
other fingers would just go on the keys around it. That's your hand position. That tells you where to put your hand. Okay, so now we know how to figure out where to put our hand on the keyboard. Now in the third measure over, you got an orange for right hand. So now the right hand is going to take over, and that's going to put the thumb on that F. So then the thumb and the right hand is going to be here. Obviously, the left hand has to get out of the way. Otherwise, the hands will be fighting with each other, and it's never good when your hands fight with each other. All right, so you're starting out with the left hand, and then the right hand takes over and finishes it up. And that's what I hear. The hand position. Now, what this piece is, is exactly all four lines. It's four lines long, so when you get done with the first line, you immediately go to the second line. And if you look at the second line, to look at the, all these four lines, the first two measures are all with the left hand, and the last two are all with the right hand, so you're constantly moving hands out of the way so the next hand can play. That'll be fun. Okay. In the third line down, when you have your thumb on the G, in the second measure, those two half notes, those are D's. Those You play them with fourth finger. You can take a pencil if you need to and write in a little four so you know which finger you're using. There, okay. Now, I don't like what they've done here, but it's not my book, it's theirs. The staff that music is written on is five lines. Alright? If you look on page 15, you'll see the whole staff is five lines. Well, on page 14, they're not using all five lines. They're only showing three lines. They're showing the top three lines. The two bottom lines are missing. So it's an incomplete picture of what's going on. Uh, probably didn't show them because you're not going to use those notes right now. I, I don't know. But just know that on the third line down, second measure, those two half notes are Ds. Then the third measure on the third line, when the right hand comes in, you put your little finger on the G and play the notes going down. That whole note at the end of the line is a C. Right? Then the third finger comes back on the fourth line in the left hand. You put your third on F again and you're back up. So it's the third line down where the hands are in a different position. And the first, second, and fourth lines, they're in the same position. Get it? Let's just try it together and see what we do. We're counting quarter notes. And since there's four beats in a measure, we're only going to count to four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, blah. blah. The metronome is beating quarter notes. All right? you take a look. Each one of these things is a quarter note. It would go one, two, three, four. One, two. This keeps our time going. Because in music, once the beat starts, it goes, all right? So in Poirot here, we're like the first measure, they're quarter notes, so it's going to be with each beat. One, two, three, four. Then the next measure, they're half notes. A half note gets two beats, so it's two quarter notes. It's worth two quarter notes. So we're going to hold it down for two of those. One, two, three. Four. So there's two of those, okay? In the last measure, it's a whole note. A whole note gets four beats, so it's worth four quarter notes. So it's one, two, three, four, uh, before you go on to the next one. You've got to hold it down. It tells you how long to hold the notes down. It comes in handy if you want to have any kind of rhythm going. Now, if you don't have enough to think about, here's some more. I don't know why they throw everything at you at once. Can't they just give you a little bit and let you absorb that before going on? It's, you know, it just... I'm assuming, I hope, you're going to go through these videos more than once. You go through the book more than once because each time you go through it, you're going to pick up more stuff that you didn't catch or you forgot or whatever. So here's some more. So if this is the second or third time you've been through it, they have introduced louds and softs because in addition to which note you play and how long you got to hold on to the note, you also need to know how loud or soft to play the note. It's like, whoa, it's a multi-dimensional thing. So they put symbols in here for what we call dynamics. That's louds and softs. And you'll eventually need to memorize them. All right. 
in the first line there at the beginning you see an MF right under it that stands for mezzo forte and it means moderately loud or medium loud so how loud is medium loud I have no idea I really don't care it's it's softer than loud but it's louder than medium soft okay you decide how loud you think it should be it's not as loud as you can play obviously it certainly isn't as soft as you can play it's sort of a above the midpoint just a little bit in the second line it's a P stands for piano means soft again I don't know how soft soft is you decide it's not as soft as you can play because you got softer than soft you got really soft and very soft and super duper soft and like I can't hear it without help soft type thing okay in the third line there's an F and that stands for forte which means loud so loud the third line will be a little louder than the first line the first line is moderately loud or medium loud third line's loud it's gonna be a little bit not as loud as you can play because you got very loud and very very loud and really super duper loud and put on the earmuffs loud and just it gets ridiculous so loud is loud all right and then the last line you're back to medium loud again okay now, in the third line, that's the one where the hands are in a different position. The last two measures, you see that long sideways arrow? That is a diminuendo sign. That means get softer. And the idea is the, the arrow can go either way. And they show the arrow in the line of music above Poirot there. You've got two arrows. One starts at a point and gets wider and the other one starts wide and gets softer because you read them from left to right like you read the music and what I do is if it starts at a point that's the softer point and as the lines get further apart you get a little louder if the lines start apart that's your louder point and then as the lines come together you get softer and that's how I read them so in the third line the lines are starting a point well you're loud for the third line you're loud so you're starting loud and then as you play those two measures you're getting softer <clears throat> I don't know how softer you can go down to soft if you want I don't care it's a, the fourth line is medium loud so you could go down to medium loud but there isn't a lot of difference between loud and medium loud so you might want to go down to soft and then start the fourth line medium loud the experiment yeah, that's all part of practicing and getting to know the music and all that junk. It's not a matter of just sit down and whipping out the notes right quick. If that's your intention, I would rethink this whole learning piano thing, because good luck. So I'd like to try this with you. Now, when I play it with you, I'm not doing louds and softs, because I want you to hear the notes. You do the louds and softs, and you decide how loud or soft you want to get. Let's go ahead and try this out and see what happens. All right, I'm going to go real slow. I put the metronome at 60. I'm going to count to four to get us started, and then we're going to play. I'm going to go one, two, ready, go, and then we play. So go ahead and put your left hand up with third fingers on the F, so you're ready to go. And remember, in two measures later, you got to have your right hand up there, okay? Now, you can put your right hand up when your left hand is playing the note right before it you can go ahead and get your right hand up where it goes so it's ready just don't hesitate don't screw up the beat the beat goes on all right no no one two ready go <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, at the bottom of page 14, over on the right hand side, there's a thing called a teacher's part. It's got a bunch of notes in it. An ugly looking thing. Yep. Well, that's so we can play a duet together. All right, so what I would like to do is play a duet together with you. So you're going to play the four lines we just played, just like you played them, right where you played them, no difference. And I'm going to do the teacher's part so you can hear the duet, okay? If there is a person around who plays piano, maybe they could do this part. You could have duets together. That would be fun. Because you could use, this works on one keyboard. You can both share the same keyboard. It's not a problem. So go ahead and put your hand up. Your left hand starts. Put your hand on the keyboard, not up. Put your hands up. So stick them up. No. Put your hand on the keyboard. Okay. Okay. I knew what you were thinking. Now I'm going to play the teacher's part so I count us in. All right? Four counts again. So here we go. One, two, three, go.